Hi, welcome to Write a Killer Mystery, where we talk about making a good mystery great. I'm your host, Sarah Altair, and today we're going to talk about suspects and subtext. So, you want to keep your sleuth guessing with subtext. A mystery novel creates a puzzle for your reader, and your reader follows your protagonist sleuth through the puzzle-solving discovery to get to the villain. Suspects are the lifeblood of your mystery. Without them, your mystery sleuth would have no challenges and solve the mystery in an instant. There'd be no story. So while evidence clues and red herrings help your reader keep guessing, the suspects provide the personal interaction with your sleuth. And that interaction in the story world keeps your reader challenge as a mystery writer to create characters that challenge your sleuth. So your detective must track down your suspects and examine them and determine each suspect's relationship with the victim and each interaction with a suspect drives your sleuth and your reader toward the ultimate solution. Mystery writers have an opportunity to confound the reader and sleuth with a dialogue between suspects and the sleuth because suspects, just like people, don't always mean what they say. Suspicious suspects have secrets and some of these secrets may be related to the murder and some not and those suspects have lies they tell to hide the secrets. And this is where you can use subtext to your advantage as a storyteller, because subtext is any context that is not announced explicitly, explicitly by the characters or author, but is implicit or becomes something understood by the observer, the reader, as the story unfolds. One phrase or sentence can either send your sleuth on a wild goose chase or reveal an intent. And as your speaker, I'm sorry, as your suspect speaks, use actions to reinforce their spoken word and reveal unintended subtext or negate exactly what they just said. Allow your suspect to reveal certain emotions or feelings and hide others. In other words, they don't tell the whole story. That is how subtext works. Only later in your story does your sleuth and your reader understand that the suspect was not telling all. You can foreshadow the complete understanding by contrasting what a character says and their action. And a character says one thing, but their body language says just the opposite. So how do you use subtext? How do you write as a writer? How do you write subtext? Um, And the most important place is in dialogue because subtext is the opposite of saying what you mean. So to write subtext, you need to explore ways for a suspect to not say what they mean. So the first thing you can do is check your dialogue. Review each scene where your sleuth interviews a suspect. Then look at what your suspect says. And if your suspect says something that is exactly what they mean, think of a way to restate it so that it isn't right on the nose and they're gonna, you're going to say the same thing without saying it. Uh, so come at it sideways, say the opposite, and imply something with body language. And this is going, each time you develop subtext in, in your story, you're going to deepen your story, create more mystery for your reader, and keep them wondering and guessing. You can also change the meaning of a statement in a story. So you're pretty much bringing the dialogue full circle from um, a beginning point in your story 
to an end point in your story. So the suspect says something early on and it seems to be spot on. But then later in the story, they say the same thing and the meaning completely changes. This is a fun way to create subtext. It so keeps your reader in that story because, oh, I remember when they said that before, but now the meaning has changed. Okay. So the first time you write the dialogue, the reader can take it at face value, but later in the story, the exact same language, the meaning expands because your sleuth and the reader know more about the character's intentions. And then a third way that you can create subtext with your suspects is when the sleuth asks a question expecting an obvious answer. He thinks this is, your sleuth thinks this is something simple. He's just verifying something. But your suspect comes up with a completely unexpected answer. So you can review your dialogue again like you did before and look for places where you can create an answer that is not obvious. Okay, those are three good ways to um, create subtext with your suspects. Um, the whole goal of this is to make your suspects more mysterious. This the whole business of writing a mystery is you want to mystify your reader. So give your suspects a reason to not reveal everything and then you create the dialogue that hides their intent and cloaks the meaning and elicits the unexpected and your sleuth and your reader will work harder to solve the puzzle. Okay, I hope that helps. Um, mystery writing is really fun and I love doing these chats about mystery writing. So if you enjoyed this, please subscribe and click that little notification bell so you'll be notified when there's a new episode of Write a Killer Mystery. And today I want to thank my uh, patrons on Patreon. Uh, they help keep this program going. And so lots of thanks to my patrons. And if you'd like to support this program, you can click the link in the description below. All right, thank you, and I will see you next time.